Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining with me in my studio on Monday morning for some more painting tips, whether they're oils, acrylics, or water mixable oil. I'm Daryl Crow, and with me today is Joe Kaczynski. Say hello, Joe. Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Okay, Joe, so did we get any questions over the past few days? We certainly did. So why don't I start off reading them to you so you can answer them? Oh, I suppose you want to get paid today. No, 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 no. Let's not change, let's not change the pattern I've grown accustomed to. Here. <laughs> this one is from Sheila Hancock. Actually, she has two questions. Please. Two of them? Yeah. And you're going to let her get away with that? Uh, only just once. No, you can have as many questions as you want, Sheila. I was kidding, Sheila. Okay. No, he wasn't. That's true. <laughs> Hi, Daryl. I love your videos and think you are great. I, I like this girl already. I like this girl already. I have a question for you. I started a painting some years ago and then left it alone like forever. Now I can't remember how I started the painting. I want to think it's oil, but it's hard to tell. It's a rough painting, and I was just getting started, but it was very complex, and I got discouraged and quit. Now, I've recently started painting again, and I would like to start on this work again. However, I want to use acrylics to get it started. Will this be okay? The paint on the canvas is not heavy, whatever it is. No knife work or anything like that. It might even be acrylic. But at a, as it has been so long since I worked on it, I would think whatever it is, it's extremely dry. <laughs> Hope you can help me. I always wanted this to be my masterpiece, and I've attached a picture for you so you can see it. Best regards, Sheila. Hi, Sheila. We looked at your photo, and I could not tell whether you had done the painting in oils or acrylics because I'm very unfamiliar with your style in either of these but apparently from your letter you've got experience in both oils and in acrylics. Um, the golden rule is that you can paint oils over acrylics but you cannot paint acrylics over oil so that's a very very fundamental question. Now if it was me I would uh, tend to choose to finish it in oils and the reason being is if it was started in oils and you do all this work and you want it to be your masterpiece it's not going to last very long and it's going to disappoint you. So I hate to tell you this, but you need to go to oil. Okay, now how do you get started? Like all traditional artists, just go ahead and put a thin clear coat of medium over the area. And if you do not uh, remember the color mixtures that you had been using, then just go ahead and do some practice mixing to match them up and then start with your technique. Now depending on how long ago, some of us uh, a long time ago is six weeks and some of us it could be 50 years. Okay, so I don't know how old the paints are or how much the painting, if it at all, has yellowed. But you may find that you might have to uh, paint over greater sections than you anticipate just to blend in the colors. But that's a secondary issue. The primary issue is mixing up the color and completing the painting. And then once it's done, take a look at it. And to preserve it, there are a number of sprays out there that will help you just go down to your local arts and crafts stores and ask them what they suggest for your uh, sprays. Now, some will tell you to wait two years before you spray your painting. Good luck, Sheila. Now, you said she had another uh, question, Joe? And the second question is, uh, this painting is 30 by 40 inches. Can I apply medium to small areas at a time instead of the whole canvas every time I work, or will that mess up the finish? No, it won't mess up the finish at all, Sheila. In fact, that's a great question. And, you know, a lot of times, uh, us students and artists in uh, wet and wet painting, we get conditioned to thinking that when we sit down, we have to finish the painting all in one step. That's a great concept because we like that instant gratification of looking at our work. But in reality, most of your professional artists paint in stages and uh, they determine each painting session what area of the canvas they're going to paint and they whack down that particular section and they develop it. Many times they wet the same section on several different days 
only because they're starting with darks and then as they uh, move to darks, they move the mediums, they move the medium ground, foreground, and brighter uh, uh, colors, and then finally highlight. Uh, this is certainly an acceptable approach and one that's encouraged quite a bit. And it's one of the ways that I develop my own masterpieces because you know something, when I'm tired, the worst thing I can do is force my painting. I want to be full of energy. I want to be excited about sitting down in front of that canvas. And I want my passion taking over. So I am used to painting in stages. And in fact, all of my masterpieces now are done in this way. I've asked a lot of professional artists, just how long do you paint at a time? And the average answer is one hour. I rarely find anyone painting over two hours a day unless they're an instructor or they have a need to do that uh, in sharing their art with other people. But most of us artists that are uh, puttering around in our studio, uh, the average seems to be about two hours. Now, remember how I told you that Sheila had two questions? Yes. I lied. She has three. She has three. Okay, Sheila. Next time you see Joe, take him on for lying about you. Here we go. Hi, Daryl. I have a very old painting that I did about 40 years ago. I noticed it has two very small areas where the paint has begun to look damaged or perhaps something happened to it. One part has a few very tiny holes in a green area in the background, less than a half an inch. Another spot looks like the paint may be peeling a little. It's in the red area of a dress. This also is a very small area. Can I put some medium on the painting, paint over these areas, and then varnish to preserve them? I painted it so long ago, I don't know what I did to protect the painting. It's an oil painting of a Spanish dancer. Wow, I love to see that one. Um, the, there's a couple of questions really involved in this. Number one is if you have little holes in your canvas, it typically comes with age, which is not surprising with a 40-year-old canvas. One of the things I like to do is take those old-fashioned adhesive tape uh, that you get out of the uh, drugstores and hospitals give out, and I go to the back of the canvas, and I'll put that adhesive tape over it. It's white, and it's sticky, and it mends the cloth together, the weave of the canvas, and you can paint on the other side, and no one will ever know that that canvas has been patched. The second thing is, is that if you have a paint that's peeling, you need to stop the peeling. So take a very sharp X-Acto knife, and uh, cut around the cracks so that you stop the crack from uh, spreading even further, then wet it down and repaint it. That sounds like a very logical answer. Well, uh, Sheila, let us know how this works. Now, the next question is from Martin Shank, and this is involving the weeping willow pellet. Okay. Daryl, would you please tell me what you used for the pellet in this lesson? I'm just beginning and have limited funds as I am retired. Thank you so much. Well, this is the Stay Wet palette, and that's S-T-A-Y-W-A-Y. And I know Joe will put it down here somewhere. And uh, basically, you could go to any arts and crafts store and find it, or you can just search on the Internet for Stay-Wet. It comes in several uh, sizes. I like the one that uh, will accommodate a 11 by 14 or a 12 by 16 palette paper because it just fits in there really nice. Very good. Next question is from Liz from Hawaii, from Honolulu, Hawaii. Liz, I'd love to come out there and do seascapes. Aloha, Daryl. I've started following your tutorial on lighthouse acrylic painting. I prefer oils priming my canvas with tinted gesso and do underpainting as well. My question is, would these techniques work well with acrylics? Well, they certainly can, but you have to realize that when you first begin your acrylic uh, painting, you want it to be dry. So whatever uh, gesso you put on, let it dry. Whatever uh, underpainting you've done, let it be dry, and then start your painting as you would. Next question is from Frank and Janine Napnik. I've been watching your YouTube, 
videos. My question is, I don't know where to start. I want to paint in acrylics, but I hate the fast drying time. I like the wet on wet, and also I'm a very slow painter. I love to blend, and the reason I paint in acrylics is that paint the acrylics cost less than oils. But what do you think I should do? Oils or acrylics? I'm 70 years old and would like to leave my paintings to my family so they would have something to see what I did in the last years of my life. Frank is his name? Frank and Jean. Well, it's Frank, yes. Frank and Jean. I'm going to be dead honest with you. Forget the money. It's very clear from your letter you like oils. It's very clear you're going to be happy with oils and you're not going to be happy with acrylics. So forget acrylics. They're not for you. Work with oil. If you have to, buy fewer colors. You might want to learn how to use a limited palette like the three primary colors and make up uh, all the other colors and that'll save you money. But generally, buying small paint tubes should probably do it. And then as you develop your painting techniques, who knows? Your friends, your other family members say, you know something, Frank or Gene, I'd like to get one of those paintings of yours. How much do you sell them for? And you could say, well, you know, I don't want any money, but maybe if you give me two, three tubes of paint, this is what I use. Here are the colors I like. And before you know it, you have more paint than you ever need, even brushes and canvases. So Frank, I would not be worried about the price of the oil paints. I would go with oil if I were you. Your big expense is going to be on the uh, canvas. That's always the big expense because we go through them a lot. Well, that wraps up our questions, but I do have a testimonial that I'd like to share. So if you want to put some tape around your head so it doesn't explode from the compliment, <laughs> I'll be happy to read it. Is someone enjoying painting, Joe? Uh, yes, they are. This one is from Valerie Woodward. All righty. Dear Mr. Crow. A few months ago, my son asked me if I would mind painting a few boxes for him, and he wanted to give them as Christmas gifts filled with fudge to his friends. I asked what color. He said, well, I was kind of hoping you could paint a few pictures on them. I can't color a decent coloring book. I don't know what made him think that I could paint Tinkerbell, where the wild things are, the Green Lantern and Power Rangers. Would you believe he's 21? I gave it a shot and discovered I wasn't so shabby. As a matter of fact, he's come back with more requests. My son also asked if I would paint Beauty and the Beast on a large box for his best friend's wedding cards. Yeah, I know, what can I say? He's six foot seven and still a kid at heart. They all are. But I guess she can't say no then. No, you can't say no. My whole life, I've collected beautiful photos of a variety of things, landscapes, Beautiful abandoned structures, overgrown with life, interesting faces, and always desired to have the ability to paint. I had heard that my father could paint, but I have never seen anything he painted. So after painting the boxes, I decided to try my hand at canvas. Painted a few geisha girls. They came out pretty good. My friend kept bugging me about painting lighthouses. I told him only men paint lighthouses, <laughs> but I gave it a shot. First one was okay, something my grandson could have done. In the middle of my second attempt, I found your videos on YouTube. I watched a couple, tried to apply the method to my painting. A huge difference. I have graduated to at least a high school level now with some talent. I am about to follow your step-by-step -step instructions on the Cape Cod. I think that's what you said it was based off of. I'm so excited to see my skills develop and blossom. Hopefully, uh, apparently I have to learn about gesso and medium and eventually graduate from folk art acrylic paint. But I have an obsession now for painting. My friend's birthday is in April and I'm hoping to paint one of the lighthouses we visited in the Bahamas a few years ago. I've worked for hospice for about 16 years. I'm passionate about my job but it can be draining. In the few paintings I have already done, I've discovered a new passion and a renewed passion for my job. Just wanted to say thank you for fueling that passion. I don't have visions of art shows or anything like that, but I'm excited to see how my paintings progress and how I change and progress as a person. 
Looking forward to viewing more of your videos. Love and light to you, Valerie. Well, Valerie, thank you so much for a wonderful uh, letter. And Joe, I'd just like to give a couple words of encouragement, not only to Valerie, but everyone out there who watches our videos. You see, the results of this, here's a woman who uh, was just asked to do a couple of paintings. She did it, and she was pretty excited. But notice how that hook got set. Now she can't stop painting, especially since she found good, solid instruction. And, and what that instruction does is it tells us up here what to do. So we know what to do, we know how to do it, and we know why we're doing it. Because I always say, if you've got it figured out here, this will behave itself. And this will follow you because the hand only does what you tell it to do. And so you're going to be up in college level in no time at all, Valerie. I'm very excited for you. Uh, Joe's very excited for you. We all are. And so you know something? If you have a question out there, does not matter if you've never painted before. If you're considering it, you can paint. You know that's been our model. Yes, you can paint. But if you have a question, go ahead and send it to me at daryl at darylcrow.com. We'll send you a nice little video lesson. You can download, put it on your uh, uh, computer and paint it and uh, let your friends admire you. We have painting lessons on YouTube and the Lighthouse is just one of them. We have nearly a hundred, if not more than a hundred videos on YouTube now, Joe. Um, you know, and if there's any one thing I could say, we love helping you. So keep sending us those letters. Keep sending us those questions. And above all, keep watching our lessons and let us by all means know how we're doing because we're here to help you. I'm Daryl Crow, and this is Joe Kaczynski. And together, what do we know, Joe? Yes, you can paint. You can paint indeed. See you next Monday.